Hey Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. In the previous video I explained aggregate demand. In this video I'm going to explain aggregate supply. But unlike demand, there's two different curves you have to be able to learn and draw. One of them is really simple, the other one a little bit more complex. Remember that aggregate means added all together. So the aggregate supply curve is the supply of all goods and services in the entire economy. And in the short run, it's super simple. As price level goes up, producers have an incentive to produce more because they'll make more profit. So the quantity supplied would increase. And when the price level falls, producers would make less profit, so they're gonna produce less output. So the quantity supplied would decrease, just like a market supply curve. And just like a market graph, the supply curve can shift. An increase is to the right, a decrease is to the left. And the shifters are really simple. Anything that affects the production of a lot of goods and services would shift the curve. For example, a change in the price of resources. If the price of resources increases and we can't produce as much as we could before, aggregate supply would shift to the left. And if we have more or cheaper resources, then aggregate supply would shift to the right. Another shifter is actions by the government. So this is taxes or subsidies or regulation. But this is not government spending. Remember, government spending is a shifter of aggregate demand. We're talking about things that are affecting supply. And the last shifter is a change in productivity. For example, a change in technology that allows us to use our resources better so we get more output for each input. There's a few terms here that your teacher or professor might use in the class or on a test. So you gotta watch out for them. The first one is the idea of capital stock. Remember that physical capital is tools, machines, and factories. It's never money. And so we talk about capital stock, we're talking about the amount of factories and tools we have in the economy. And you're also gonna hear about supply shock. A supply shock is when there's an unexpected change in the price or availability of a key resource, like electricity or oil or steel or something else needed to produce a lot of goods and services. A negative supply shock is when we have less resources and we can't produce as much as we did before. A positive supply shock is when we can produce more because we have new resources. Hello. I am Baymax. The shifters of supply are pretty simple and intuitive, so you probably feel pretty comfortable with this. But there's something you gotta watch out for. A change in price level doesn't shift the supply, but a change in expected price level does shift the supply. What? Don't worry, it's totally gonna make sense. When price level goes up, we move along the short run aggregate supply curve and produce more output. That's what we said happens in the short run. But eventually, people are gonna respond to that increase in price level. If prices are going up and people expect more inflation, then the cost of resources and wages are gonna go up. If I'm negotiating my wage with my employer and price level goes up 5%, I'm gonna ask for a 5% higher wage. And this increase in wages and the price of resources would increase the cost of producers and shift the aggregate supply curve to the left. So when the price level went up, producers produce more output in the short run, but eventually wages and resource prices also go up, so we end up right here in the long run. And when you connect these two dots, you end up with a second curve that's gonna show you what's gonna happen in the long run. That's the long run aggregate supply. And it goes the other direction as well. When price level falls, producers produce less output because they're making less profit. We end up right here. But because price level has fallen, people expect lower prices. So the price of contracts and wages will fall. The price of resources would fall. That would lower the cost of production, causing the short aggregate supply curve to shift to the right, putting us at the long run aggregate supply curve. So if there's a decrease or an increase in the price level, there's going to be a short run effect in the economy. But eventually, in the long run, wages and the cost of resources will adjust and we'll be right here at the long run aggregate supply. And doesn't that kind of remind you of something that we've seen before? That vertical long run aggregate supply represents full employment and the amount we're gonna produce in the long run. And the long run aggregate supply curve that you're learning here in unit three is showing you the same concepts as the production possibilities curve that you learned back in unit one. They both show our maximum sustainable capacity and the amount that we're gonna produce at full employment. And anything that shifts the production possibilities curve would shift the long run aggregate supply. Okay, I get it, I get it, it makes sense. Now you understand why there's two aggregate supply curves, an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve and a vertical long run aggregate supply curve. But now it's time to practice. I have five scenarios for you. I want you to figure out what's gonna happen to the short run aggregate supply curve. Is it gonna increase or decrease? And what's the shifter for each situation? Pause the video and I'll go over the answers. You have been a good boy. Have a lollipop. If nominal wages increase, that's gonna be an increase in the cost of resources, so the short and aggregate supply curve is gonna to shift to the left. If there's more physical capital, that means we have more tools and factories to produce more stuff, so short run aggregate supply is gonna increase and shift to the right. But if we have power outages, then we couldn't produce as much, there'd be less resources available, so aggregate supply would decrease 
and shift to the left. And this would be an example of a negative supply shock. A decrease in corporate taxes would mean producers have more money to produce more stuff, so aggregate supply would increase and shift to the right. And the last one, if people expect higher prices in the future, costs are gonna increase for wages and resources, so aggregate supply is gonna decrease, shifting to the left. Notice that for each one of these, I specifically mentioned that I'm talking about the short run. It doesn't seem like that matters much, but it totally does. For your quizzes, your exam, your final exam, the AP test, make sure to read carefully. Are we asking about the short run or the long run? For example, if I asked you what happens to the long run aggregate supply when nominal wages increase, the answer would not be decrease, it would be nothing. Long run aggregate supply would stay exactly the same because we are paying those workers more, but we still have only a certain number of workers, so we're not producing more or less output in the long run. But if we had more physical capital, then we could produce more and the long run aggregate supply curve would shift to the right. The point here is just be careful and read carefully. Make sure if they're asking you about short run, or long run. Okay, how did you do on that? Please let me know in the comments below and stick around because we have two things to do. First one, it's time to like and subscribe and take a look at my ultimate review packet if you need more help and practice. Also, it's time for me to show you what we're gonna put on the wall behind me. The short run upward sloping aggregate supply curve, it's simple, it's easy, it makes sense. But the long run aggregate supply curve is a little bit more complicated because it shows you how wages and cost of resources adjust when there's a change in price level. But mostly I'm using these to remind you about the importance of practice. Just like solving a Rubik's Cube, you're gonna have to sit down and practice aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And the second thing we gotta do, it's time for a pop quiz. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a few practice multiple choice questions, so pause the video, try the questions, and look in the comments below for the answer key. Thanks for watching, until next time.